things up just a little bit. Instead of just talking straight communications, we're going to talk communicating through art. And specifically, we're going to spotlight an emerging young artist right here in the New York area. As you may or may not know, in New York City, throughout Queens and in all of the boroughs, uh, whenever something needs to be cut in our public schools, it seems as if the art budget is one of the first things just decimated. But tonight we're going to look at a young emerging artist who has taken her art classes in school and just run with it. She's developed her artistic talent at only 15 years old and she's definitely one of our young and upcomings here in the New York City area. Good evening, Kirsten. Good evening. This is Kirsten Iovino. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So you're an up-and-coming artist. We're surrounded on this set by all of your different art. I'm loving it. So you're 15 years old. Yes. And sophomore in high school. Yes. And where do you go to high school? I go to Ardsley High School in Westchester, New York. Awesome. And you take, as part of your curriculum in high school, you take art classes. Yes. All right. And do you think that the art classes that you've taken throughout high school and also in middle school have really helped you develop your talent? Yeah, because my teachers have also have always told me that there are no mistakes and it's also a way to express yourself. So mm -hmm. it's helped me, inspire me to work as hard as I do on my projects. Mm -hmm. And in addition to art, you do other things as well. You're a cheerleader. Yeah, I'm a cheerleader and I used to be a gymnast and I also used to play softball when I was little too. Mm -hmm. Well, I see a little bit of your inspiration yes. here in your art. Um, yes. Just one in particular that I, I just want to look at right now. Um, this is? It's a person standing on their hands, and mm -hmm. it was inspired by my gymnastics background, mm -hmm. and they're doing a handstand. And what's that made of? It's made of paper mache, and it's just layered, and then it's painted, painted with gold paint. Mm -hmm. Do you have to put some wire underneath there yeah. first? Yeah. There's a wire under it which gives the framework and then you go you go over it as many times as however thick you want like the lower area is mm -hmm. thicker. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and then you just keep dipping it. Great. Yeah, you just keep dipping. And over it's and over inspired again. by your gymnastics. Yeah. Awesome. Um, it, now you say that you're dipping this in in lots of paper mache mm -hmm. and you're painting in gold, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Where does your mom allow you to do this in your house? I usually, well, this particular one was done mm -hmm. in as a school project, so we did it in school. Mm -hmm. But when I paint or crepe or any of the other materials, I usually do it in my living room, mm -hmm. on my living room table, and I cover it with newspapers to make sure nothing gets anywhere, mm -hmm. and that's where I usually. I got to give it to your mom for letting you <laughs> use all of these materials in her yeah. living room. She also buys me a lot of the different ones, so mm -hmm. I'm ex I was exposed even at a young age to all different types of mediums and materials. You mentioned craypar. What's that? It's kind of like uh, colored pencils, but it's mm -hmm. thicker and it's easier to blend. You mm -hmm. can blend multiple colors with it like that one over there the this? yes mm -hmm. the one the, in the left hand corner right. it's the palm trees and right. you were able to blend the backgrounds and merge it together and that's with using the cray part yeah nice and you just mentioned that your mom uh, exposed you to art at an early age yes tell us about how you first started um, at an early age I would always I had all the different materials and I would always grab a piece of paper or something mm -hmm. And I would just color randomly or random mm -hmm. lines. And that piece that you're holding is one of my first, it's my first art piece ever. And my mom decided to frame it because she knew I would get somewhere in art. Wow. How old were you when you did this? Around four, five. Four or five years old. Yeah. And I love that she framed it. Yeah. Where does this hang right now? It was in our family room at my house. At your house. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And um, so you did this when you were about four or five years yeah. old. And then I have this other example of your artwork. And this yeah. is from 2003. So you're yes. 15 now. So you so were five, five here. Years old. Yeah. And tell me about that. Um, I created a drawing and then we went and got it printed to make cards and we distributed the cards to different members of my family and mm -hmm. yeah. And you've came a long way if you look when you did this framed work yeah. when you were four years old and then you did these cards when you were five. It seems yeah. as if you grew leaps and bounds already when you were younger. Yeah. 
And I love that your mom printed these into these note cards that she gave out to the family. Yeah. And then on the back. Yeah, I signed it. That's great. You with signed it in your five-year-old uh, signature yeah. with the year also. That's great. I love that she did that. And this just blows my mind that she kept this as well. She could see that you were really going down the artistic path even yeah. when you were four years old. That is great. So then you started doing this when you were four and five years old. Then what came next? Um, as I grew older in middle school and high school, I just kept going with it. And in my art classes, I would always try and go above and beyond to make my art look appealing. Mm -hmm. And I used a variety of mediums based on what our teachers told us to do. Right. And then I just kept working from there. Oh, that's great. So then um, also in middle school, you took a lot of art classes. You yeah. had that exposure in school as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we're missing from a lot of curriculums right yeah. now. But it's great that you had that exposure in middle school too, and then moving on to high school. Yeah. So you've got a lot of stuff around here. This just looks some, like something that you would have done when you were younger. When did you do this? And I how did you create this? I did that at the beginning of this year, mm -hmm. and it was it's made out of all old magazines. So you went and you looked through a variety of magazi magazines, and you had to make sure there was no writing on the back because if there's mm -hmm. writing on the back, it could you can see it through. It kind of bleeds through. Yeah. So each one of these, you had to take like a piece of a magazine and just cut where there was little. nothing on the other side. Nothing. That sounds very difficult. And cut little triangles and then just mm -hmm. put them all together, and you had a layer. And it's so then, how'd you get the color in there? The magazines were the different colors, and okay. then you would just pick from there. And so you had to sit and get a whole bunch of pieces of white from yeah. the magazine, cut them into little triangles. And then try and make them fit to the to shape. This. Okay. So did you start by, um, I guess, uh, putting an outline on yeah. this? Mm -hmm. We had a grid. Um, we mm -hmm. made it into a 16 box grid and mm -hmm. then we s we had a picture and we sketched it from the picture. So you had a picture of Donald Duck. Yeah, okay. and then we based it off the picture and then once we finished drawing it we erased the lines and then we just started looking for the magazines. And, and is the grid method, is that something that you use a lot in painting? Yeah, even if my teachers don't tell me to, mm -hmm. I always use that one because it's easier because it breaks it into little segments right. so you're not overwhelmed by the whole picture. Mm -hmm. You have like little segments. And then, with, just to get back to, to Donald Duck for a mm -hmm. moment, is this Baby Donald? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to get back to Baby Donald. So then once you put all of the pieces of the colored pieces on here and arrange them just so, what did you put over them? It's a clear, it's like a clear glue, so mm -hmm. it helps it, th it helps them to stick together mm -hmm. and Okay, so it's, is it like a decoupage kind glue? Of. Yeah, mm -hmm. only clear. Yeah. Okay. Is this heavy? Let's see. Oh, no, no it's not. It's heavy. quite light. Yeah. I'm very. That's that's great. And will you frame this? What would you do with something like this? I'm definitely gonna frame that one. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorites. So I don't know. Okay. Maybe put it in my room or in my mom's office because I display a lot of my artwork there. Mm -hmm. Is I'm your sure. art available for us to see anywhere right now? Not right now. Outside of, I mean, outside of the living room or your mom's office. <laughs> Not right now, but hopefully soon, maybe. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll work on that for you, getting you, uh, anyone who's watching who knows of uh, uh, where we can get Kirsten's work displayed, you know, give us a call. So, um, so this was something you worked on this week. You've got a couple of things in your lap. Yeah. And these are a couple of different uh, types of art. Yes. This is a shading? This is uh, the shading method with colored pencils, and we mm -hmm. had to choose a tool, and I chose a paintbrush because even when I was little, I used to paint, so mm -hmm. it was one of the things that I liked. And then we created it, and then we just shaded it with the different um, colored pencils. Colored pencils yeah. When did you do this piece? Uh, this piece was at the, it was my first project of this year, mm -hmm. so my first project. So it's relatively and, new. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. September. And did you, you did this as part of a school project, mm -hmm. may I ask, what grade did you get? And A plus. All right, <laughs> that's great. That's awesome. You can really see the depth of the bristles. If yeah. you look at those bristles, they're all different colors. It kind of gives that three-dimensional look to it. Uh, I like that a lot with the with the shading as well. Great job. You Thank deserve you. the A plus. Not Thank that I'm you. an art teacher, but I think you it was well deserved. Um, and what is this? What kind of paper was this done on? Uh, it's just like printer type paper. It's, okay. It's not that thick. It's pretty thin. Actually. And what else do you have? Um, this one. Mm -hmm. It was just black paper, and you used an X-Acto knife, which is kind of like a, it's just a knife. Right. And you scratched the 
design the mm -hmm. designs into it and when you scratched the black went away and it turned into white and what is this so. a picture of it's just all different designs what we did actually was we listened to music my teacher put on music and we just had a marker and we just let our imagination run wild and we kind of drew whatever lines we felt would mm -hmm. went with the song and then what song we was it done, do you remember I don't even remember it was <laughs> I don't even know, mm -hmm. but um, and then we just picked a portion of it, mm -hmm. and we. Just and did what kind of paper is this? Because it's got like a black, yeah, uh, it's painting like, on it. Yeah, it's it's just I think it was just white paper, and it was like painted over in black. Okay. And then when you sketch, when you etch into it, the. Did you ever do that as a way. child, like? A yeah, with the rainbow colored one. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And then you, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. we're right there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that's called either. Yeah. I'm sorry, viewers. I don't know what that's called, but I, but this is that same technique. I love that, and it just seems like it took a lot of time. Yeah, it it was pretty tedious, but in the end, it came out mm -hmm. pretty good. So. Awesome. What else have you got for us? Um, Does that have a name at all? No, I have. I don't really name my stuff, but mm -hmm. um, I think you should. Maybe. Yeah, going forward. <laughs> um, this one mm -hmm. is actually we had to look through magazines and mm -hmm. we had to pick um, which we had to pick three pictures and combine them. So I picked a woman's face and then there was a man who was wearing a suit and then a flower and I put it as the eye. And wow, that's great. And this is shading again with yeah, it's mm -hmm. just shading with pencil, and then we had to pick one thing to stand out. And, and that obviously the was the, the yeah. flowers. Mm -hmm. That is great. Did you mean to have the the, the face so prominent yeah. and then the body yeah. so small? Yeah. Why Why did you do that? Um, because the face was basically the main focus. I didn't really want to focus too much on the suit, mm -hmm. so. You didn't want to really focus on the man. It's yeah, more the I woman. wanted to <laughs> focus more on the woman. So. I like that. Great job. And the colors, was that paint or was that? Uh, no, it's just colored pencil. Okay. But it's over and over again. Okay. To keep and what else have you got? Um, I have this one, mm -hmm. which is also made out of colored pencils. Mm -hmm. And it's coffee and there are faces in the coffee. And when you're doing something like this, are there three cups of coffee in front of you, or no, is this just? No, I based it off a magazine picture. For okay. This one. And what was the picture? Just three cups of coffee. It was three cups of coffee. I think it was for Starbucks, maybe. Okay, it but it was an ad. Yeah, it was. And an then ad. the people's faces. Did you think of putting people's faces in there? It or? actually, it actually had it, except this one wasn't as swirled as I made it. Like I tried to make it like a swirly feel, like uh, foam. Mm -hmm. And yes. Very nice. Was this a white piece of paper to begin with? Or? No, it was just bl it was a black piece of paper to begin with, and then we just and then you just kind of colored it in with mm -hmm. that. That is great too. How long did that take? Um, Looks intensive. Yeah. Well, whenever I usually don't finish them in school, so I have mm -hmm. to take them home, and it took a couple of hours to finish up at home. Okay. It seems like it takes just art in general. It seems as if it really makes you focus. Do you yeah. find that? Yeah, mm -hmm. and it also helps relieve my stress because it's just a way of expressing just myself and just letting go and mm -hmm. doing whatever you want. That is great. Anything else in there? Um, I have one more. It's actually a polar bear. Mm -hmm. That is very sweet. It's made out of um, watercolors again because mm -hmm. that's one of the main materials that I like to work with. Mm -hmm. Again, did you have a picture or was this? Yeah, we yeah. had a, we usually base them off pictures mm -hmm. and then we just it from there. Very nice. I like that. It's Thank cute. You. Yeah, I like the watercolors, of course. Yeah. And speaking of watercolor, well, speaking of painting, I'm just looking over your shoulder here at uh, JB, Justin <laughs> Bieber. And I'm looking at Justin, and I also noticed that on your yeah. on your wrist, you've got a You've got Justin Bieber. What does it say? Justin Bieber, never say never. Never say never. I love it. And so you're you're obviously uh, a Justin Bieber fan. A huge Bieber fan. <laughs> <laughs> and so what is this? Um, I made this around the time that his new album came out, mm -hmm. so Under the Mistletoe just was released and I decided I wanted to draw him because we could do, we had to draw a person and Justin Bieber is one of my inspirations, so I decided to draw him and yeah. Why do you find inspiration in Justin? I mean his, his songs are just about so many things and like never say never, like I don't know. Mm -hmm. And with the technique that you used, did you use the same technique that you used uh, with this, with the grid? Yeah, with the grid technique, and then we just um, painted, we had to divide it into all little boxes, and each box is actually a different 
color, a slightly different color. So how did you do that? Did same. you start with like a black? Yeah, you started with a black mm -hmm. container and a white container, and uh -huh. then you just poured a little bit of each out, and you, you had to mix it to make the grays or the whites or however dark the picture was. I pin, pr printed the picture in black and white to see what the different shades were, right? and then you went from there. And so then, let me see if I got this straight. There's so many different boxes on this, on this painting, and none of those boxes is the same color. Nope. They're all different colors. All slightly different. How long did this take? I mean, just mixing the different paints must have been tedious. It took so much time, and especially the hair, because every time you change a line, mm -hmm. you have to change the color. So wow. it, was, it was pretty hard. Pretty intensive. Yeah. But I like it. It's great. It shows that depth. And in his hair, you see all the different depth as well. Great yeah. job. Thank you. Awesome. And of course, you know, you're a believer, so. <laughs> We like that. And over my shoulder here, there's another watercolor of a rose. Can you tell us about that one? Um, I, my teacher said we had to do a watercolor painting, and every time I usually walk home, so I'm I see all different flowers, and they're just I just think they're so beautiful. So I decided to capture that in that painting, and then I created the flower, and I created the different tones by making it darker in some areas, and mm -hmm. then in the like background, here, or darker, and then yeah. lighter. And then in the background, I just kind of like made it seem like it was in nature. So mm -hmm. I just kind of threw all different colors, like what you would find. Did you, did you steal the rose out of someone's garden? No. Take I, actually, <laughs> I actually found that picture, and it looked like one that I saw, saw. when I was walking home one day. Mm -hmm. So I, I utilized it. Oh, I okay. It good. I thought you stole it, and then we could apologize no. on, on camera to, these, to whomever it was. No. And this is a heavy piece right down here at my feet. Yeah. And so this is, this is, on what? It's on a piece of tile that mm -hmm. I went to. I went to Home Depot and I got it. Yeah, and here. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big. It's a piece of tile. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And for a social studies project, um, I was doing, I was doing the project on Egyptian art mm -hmm. in the temples, and we had to create something f that you would put in an exhibit. Okay. So I decided that I would use that temple painting after going through numerous books, and then. I printed it on the, I drew it onto, onto the tile, the tile. Mm -hmm. and then I used paints to get the colors. What kind of paints? Um, it was paints that were on tile, mm -hmm. like you could make on tile. Okay, so that wouldn't just rub off? Yeah, that wouldn't just rub off, yeah. And do you remember, is this like a hieroglyphic type of yeah, thing? Yeah, it was a hieroglyphic type painting in, the, in mm -hmm. the temple. And how long did this take to make? Um, well, that because that w we didn't get time in class or anything because it was for a different it was for a social studies project. Mm -hmm. It took about I don't know a couple of days just to because I drew it and then well I had to get the tile first and then I had to find the image so it took a while. Okay, and did I'm I'm curious other people in your class in your social studies class did they do something like this as well? Not really. One of my friends she actually used a smaller piece of tile and just chose one person to put on it mm -hmm. but a lot of people just decided to make statues or something because you didn't have to do temple paintings mm -hmm. I decided to because it, it was the art aspect of Egyptian times mm -hmm. so that's what I did but no not really nobody did something like that okay this is great I'm loving this and I just love that you did it on a piece of tile yeah yeah that's... I wanted to make it seem like it was actually in like a yeah, it, it would seem like it was something that, uh, just because of what it's painted on there, it seems as if it's something that it would be part of uh, the Egyptian culture. Yeah. Like, yeah, like it, it just fell out of there. Of course, it fell out of the Home Depot, but <sighs> no one needs to know that. <laughs> and so then over my right shoulder, I'm in love with this picture. This mm -hmm. seems like so incredibly intensive. Tell me about it. Um, it was my eighth grade project, mm -hmm. and since I was graduating middle school, our teachers basically said, you had to have five different boxes with different types of mediums, mm -hmm. and then you could basically do whatever you wanted in any of the boxes. So I used that to express myself. Like one of them says my name, and that's that's this one. Yeah, mm -hmm. in balloons. And then the one above that is right. I always go. To, I used to go to the beach, and I used to spend a lot of time at the Jersey Shore. So I would I, that explain that mm -hmm. and then I always used to love monkeys and people <laughs> always used to say I was crazy like one so I decided to do that one mm -hmm. and then gymnastics and softball were gymnastics softball yeah, were two of the sports that I played mm -hmm. um, when did you play softball I played softball up until the end of eighth grade and okay. I pitched seventh and eighth grade nice so throughout okay yeah. and then gymnastics yeah 
I did gymnastics for eight years, and then I switched to cheerleading. Now. Yeah, cheerleading so much better than gymnastics. <laughs> what else is in here? We've got. I see uh, you're a believer again. Justin Bieber lyrics again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody to love. Yes. Why did you put the lyrics in there? That seems. Um, it seems as if you know this whole thing is just it, it's it's a picture, and then there's printed words. Well, it was my favorite song at the time, and I still mm -hmm. love that song. So basically, it was describing who I am. So it mm -hmm. shows that. Justin Bieber is one of my major inspirations. Mm -hmm. And also there's this kind of a checkered pattern in yeah, there too. Yeah, and then there's cir like there's circles, circles in there. In, in there, yeah. Is there an inspiration behind that? Um, I took an extracurricular class when I was in I think 6th grade mm -hmm. and it sho he showed it my teacher showed us how to work with Sharpies to create like cool different designs. Designs. Mm -hmm. So I thought of that and I was like, "Oh, that would be really cool to put on there." So Neat. And this looks like it's inspired by something else. What, yeah. What is this? Uh, Keith, it was inspired by the artist Keith Herring. Right. Because he does all the people like that. Mm -hmm. And then I made it my own by doing the zigzags in the background okay, and multiple yeah. hearts in the heart. And yeah. Yeah, we've seen these before around. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to see it with a, a different take, mm -hmm. your own interpretation. And then the stars. Yeah. I always loved stars. Me and my cousin would draw them on everything. Mm -hmm. So. So you're a star in your own right. And of course, yes. you've got to put them in here. And then up here. What's that? Um, I, when I was little, my mom always used to tell me and my dad to believe, mm -hmm. and I could do anything if I put my mind to it. Mm -hmm. So that's the words. That's the word I always used to live by. And even at uh, City Field, we have a brick at City Field that says "Believe" on it mm -hmm. because that's great. Your parents, your family, bought a brick. Yeah. I remember when they were building City Field a few years ago. You could purchase a brick. Yeah. And yours says one. "Believe." Mm -hmm. That is great. That's a great thing. And then it carries over into your art. And then over here you've got some color, and over here you've got yeah. Some that color. one's actually splatter paint. This one. Yeah, we mm -hmm. went outside one day and we just threw different colors around. And then you just cut it out and stick it, stuck it on there too. Mm -hmm. And then this one. It was just I had that one box left, and I was like. I don't know, let's try different colors and I just mix them all together and mm -hmm. decided to And then you said that this was five boxes? It started with five, mm -hmm. like five huge ones, and then you could divide it into however many you wanted. You mm -hmm. didn't have to have a set number. And then it just became this. Mm -hmm. And then did your mom mount this or did you mount, mount this on something? Um, the people in my mom's office actually mm -hmm. decided to mount that for me. My mom brought it to them. Oh, that is great. It and it, so where does it display right it now? It was in my mom's office. Oh, that is great. Mom. Seems like your mom's your biggest fan. Yeah, a lot of my art's displayed there. Even in her old office, all my art was there. And when she got transferred, mm -hmm. we put all my new art in there too. Nice. Yeah. So you're you're actually displayed in two places right now. You're at uh, your mom's office and in your home. In my house. There you go. <laughs> now we just need a gallery or two <sighs> to go along with it as well. And this piece right down here by your feet, I just love this. Tell me about what that's made of. Um, it's paper mache mm -hmm. un under it. That's the framework for it. Mm -hmm. And then can layers. you just flip it around so everyone can see the back? So it's uh, it's uh, like many different pieces or strips of yeah. paper. Yeah, you mm -hmm. have strips of paper to lay out the framework for it, and mm -hmm. then you just dip the paper mache over it, however many time, however thick you want it, to make sure that it doesn't. You don't see the mm -hmm. the paper under it. Right, and then you painted it. Then I actually used um, tissue paper, different pieces of tissue paper, uh -huh. to m make the green. I used different shades of green, and mm -hmm. then I used felt to create the flowers. Nice. OK. Yes. And then buttons, of course. Buttons, yes, as the center of the flowers. And the Very hair. nice. So it's a mask, kind of a mouth down there. Yeah, the mask right here, and then the nose, and then there's two eyes. And I guess that's the third eye. A third eye on top. I, I love it. <laughs> that is great. And also by your feet, next to where that mask was, Kind of looks like a, and I don't, I don't want to say the the name of that that other bear that was very popular a few years ago, <laughs> but it kind of looks like that, but it's not. It's your own interpretation. Yeah. It was just um, my teacher. This was for um, a sewing class, and my teacher mm -hmm. basically just said to pick any fabric you wanted and then create mm -hmm. create a bear out of it. So, and so that the fabric was already those red, mm -hmm. white, and blue colors. Yeah. Nice. Okay. How long did that take to make? Um, it took a couple of weeks mm -hmm. in class. We worked on the sewing machines that my teacher provided. Nice. And what's inside? It's all um, like cotton. And okay. Like, like a fill, a filler. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning of the show, and I'm not going to reach down and grab it, but at the beginning of the show, we started by focusing in on one of your artworks, which is right up here in the front. 
Um, can you tell us about that? That was like the, the green mm -hmm. and the pink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was, what we had to do was we took a piece of tape mm -hmm. and we made it into whatever design we wanted and we put it down on the paper. Right. And we left the tape there and then we took watercolors and mm -hmm. spread it all around the painting. Mm -hmm. And then we ripped the uh -huh. tape off right. to expose the white the white parts of it. And, uh -huh. yeah. and then it became this. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. And then the colors, you used that really rich green yeah, and, and those really rich pinks. Mm -hmm. Did you mix them yourself? or? Um, yeah, my, teach, my teacher helped me to mix them because mm -hmm. I, I was in middle school, I think, when I made that You were in middle school? Or it might have been elementary school. I don't even remember. It was a while wow. ago. Wow. About how old is that picture? Um, maybe five years. Wow. When mm -hmm. you were 10. Yeah, that was one of my earlier ones. That's huge for a 10 year. I mean, it's huge yeah. for a 15 year old too, <laughs> but it's huge that you did that when you were when you were uh, 10 years old. That's yeah. great. And then I just want to grab this last piece so we can take a peek at this as well. Can you tell us about this? Um, that was probably second or third grade. Second or third grade. Yeah. So you're about seven years old here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And my teacher basically just had us choose the primary colors of paint mm -hmm. and just mix them around on the paper and kind of we didn't really have a set thing to do with it we could have done anything we wanted so I just decided to make Elseworld and mm -hmm. right there I decided to make a heart and then there's some hearts in like on the over there too. right yeah and what's your inspiration here are you thinking about fruit or what <laughs> I think I was just I don't know I was just like running wild and doing whatever I wanted just spreading the colors out and seeing what looked good to mm -hmm. me. And I love that you did this when you were five and your mom uh, framed it. That mm -hmm. is just great. Mm -hmm. Where does this hang? That one was in my mom's old office mm -hmm. and now it's in her new one. I love that too. Great job overall. So yeah. we're having so much fun with the art here today on Communication Corner. Um, let me just say thank you to Kirsten for thank coming for on. If we want some more information about your um, art, where can we email you? We, you can email me at riavino. Mm -hmm. at eastmidtown.org. Okay. And um, is there anywhere we can look at your work online? I don't have not, not anything yet. online right now. But that's coming. But hopefully soon. Okay. So that's coming soon. Thank you so much, Kirsten, for Thank joining you. us on Communication Corner today. Email me, newday2010 at yahoo.com. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you on Communication Corner again real soon. Good night.